grappling fans. What's up? Welcome to another edition of Fist Full of Collars. This is the podcast, the weekly podcast. We break down the biggest nori- uh, stories, news, uh, gossip, everything you need to know about in the world of jiu-jitsu. And this is a special one because we have a special guest in the studio today. To my left here, none other than uh, ADCC veteran, jiu-jitsu legend here, Hollis Gracie. Hollis, thanks for coming in, man. man. My pleasure, really. yeah. my pleasure. And of no course, peace. over there in the corner, we have uh, Fistful of Collars mainstay, Chase Smith. Very pumped for today's show. It's, it's always awesome we have a guest on, and today's going to be a good one. My name is Reed Connell. I'm going to be hosting things for you. Hal Teague is out. He's on vacation this week, so it's just the three of us. But like I said, very exciting podcast. We've got a lot of news, a lot of things to get to. But uh, first off, man. How was the uh, how, how was the the trip down here? How was it? Was it? Easy. Is that right? yeah, it was, it was easy. I love to come to Austin. Yeah, yeah. my favorite place to visit. Down you know, in Austin, very easy. Texas. You're very excited obviously for this. you're in uh, you're in New York, right? How are things in New, New York? New York based, yeah. You know, New York is New York. New York's crazy. You know, the, <laughs> <laughs> the crazy city, but uh, I love it. Yeah. You know. Yep. So, mm, um, unfortunately, we got some bad weather here here in Austin. So it's it's probably pretty similar to to what New York was like. Yeah, right? you know, when the, when the plane landed, I thought we landed somewhere else. <laughs> you know, I was like, are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> Usually, it's I pretty sunny. Worried. It's pretty nice. Yeah. Did I get in the right plane? Yeah. <laughs> you know? You're uh, you're teaching a couple seminars in the Austin area, right? Yes, I'm going to a force in a New Brussels tomorrow, and then. Uh, on Saturday, I go to Sean Cooper's uh, Cooper MMA in North Austin. That's awesome. So if you guys are local in the Texas Austin area, be sure to check those out. Um, I'm sure there's information on Hollis's uh, Instagram and stuff like that. So there you yep, go. There you go. Um, so like we said, we, we break down a lot of the the news, the gossip, the stories in in uh, in jiu-jitsu these days. So we'll kind of jump right into things. Um, last uh, a couple weeks ago, Chase was mm. out in uh, in um, where were you? Romania. I was in Romania. Romania. It was in beautiful Bucharest, uh, the capital nice. city there for ADCC trials, and uh, did a little uh, stat diving the other day. Went through all the submission finishes, and we found I don't know if we can pull up that chart there. Um, the top submission from the event, as you can see, is, nice is pie graph here. The, the heel hook. Yeah, that's the extent of my graphic design work. <laughs> it stops there. But, um, but heel hooks absolutely just, just decimated the competition, uh, almost more than double, or actually absolutely double, of the next closest one, the rear naked choke. And, and I'm glad we got um, Hollis in here today because, of course, yep. you know, Hollis, you've um, gone through the ADCC trials system and, and of course, um, ADCC worlds as well right yes i i went straight to the world to the to the worlds but uh yeah but i've been through many of the trials you know coaching helping some guys of course. And seeing a lot so and um a lot of times what, what but i was back in uh, 2005 2007 2007 2007 area so um you know obviously 2018 right now we've seen uh, things evolve the jiu-jitsu evolved quite a bit since then and does that um stat shock you though that, that the heel hook finish is so effective um if you just looked at the ADCCs back, you would shock, but not if you see that's a big trend in uh, heel hooks these days in, uh, in, gra- in the grappling world, right? Mm. So I think it doesn't surprise me. I think it's, uh, it's a big trend. People have been working a lot uh, uh, on those techniques. I think people are finding like uh, they're hacking, you know? Yeah. The, 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 especially the, the sweeps and guard passes that people are using heel hooks and leg attacks to, to hack that. Um. Would you say that why is there such a gap though? Because if it's so popular, then you would think there'd be a, a good defense to it. But there's clearly like a whole bunch of people that don't know what's going on. What's why is that the case? You think? I think it's uh, you know I've I've seen like I said I've seen a lot you know I've seen all, all the trends you know come and go. I've seen the Hugh Hook trend before. Mm. Oh yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know uh, I I remember when uh, Pajares was doing a lot you know in sure. the you know few you know few ADCCs ago too. Uh, I feel it's about uh, maybe not as, as big as a trend because it wasn't a, as big. Mm-hmm. Okay, we didn't have like as many uh, social media, you know, YouTube and true, you true. know. So I think that things will, will stay a little more hidden. But uh, I've, I've seen trends come and go, and I, I think they come and go because people people find the poison, mm. and so then a little bit, a little, it's just a matter of time for they find the, find the antidote. You know, and then we gotta move on to to new things, of mm-hmm. course, and then so on and so on. I feel that like, uh, and it keeps uh, going in circles, right? right? And every time the, the the it comes back to the same point in the circle, people are doing that the same thing better. That's funny, you it's know, like a j- dog chasing his exactly. tail. <laughs> exactly, but but improving. Uh, to me, it's not just like a a circle like this. It's almost going like, 
you know? Okay. Expanding, getting bigger and bigger, and people getting, you know, tennis better. More refined, more refined. More refined, and finding new uh, uh, ways to set set those techniques up and uh, become more specialized in those. Are heel hooks something that you've been training for, for um, I don't know, how many years? Or since, the, since the beginning? Or? Yeah, you know, uh, of course, with the gi, we, we were never allowed to, to use those in competition, but... Uh, during no gi season in, in Brazil, but like it's funny because people see, uh, talk about no gi season now, but uh, in Brazil, uh, in the summertime, it's just no gi season. <laughs> it's just too hot. <laughs> it's just too hot. To you know, be. I'm from the days that you see guys uh, rolling with uh, speedos. <laughs> <laughs> oh know? man! So, like, and, we're, and we're using those things then, you know, like the, the toe holds, heel hooks, and uh, gotcha. yeah. But um, it comes and goes for sure. But it's getting a lot better. People are getting. Um, way better and more dangerous with those things yeah of course john and, and gordon got those guys out of uh henzo gracie yeah. there they, they're two of the guys who are really pushing that envelope for yes. sure yes yeah man you know see like many guys you know like uh you know gary eddie you know see guys like craig jones mm -hmm. so know. these days it's probably it's like if you're not doing heel hooks these days you're, you're way behind right is, is that or do you still think there's there's avenues to to win without them no i think there's avenues to win for sure I don't think like uh, uh, you have to do something just because uh, people are doing. Mm -hmm. um, what I like to always tell, uh, tell my students and the people I have access to is uh, don't chase the, the trend. Mm. You know what I mean? Don't just like, it's important to know, like to me, Jiu-Jitsu is such a complex, complex thing, Yeah. right? If you just like, uh, you see something that is really in, okay, you need to understand. You need to know Jiu-Jitsu enough so you can understand what's going on. Right, mm -hmm. uh, so you can, if 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 a trend suddenly comes up, let's say, let's put it this way, you can quickly catch up, because you understand leverage, you understand position, and you understand all those things. But if you're just a guy who just you know, looking for techniques, you're in trouble. You're just going to be a, a quick tap, or a like... quick tap, or you know, or the golden technique. I I always like to say there's no golden technique. People ask me, what's the best guard pass? I said, which guard pass? Which, what's the best guard pass? <laughs> if you know, yeah. please tell me. <laughs> you know, what's the you know the best submission hold? There's the unbeatable. None. There's none. Yeah. You know, there's no golden technique. There's no shortcuts. Mm -hmm. You know, you gotta train. You gotta understand. You know, you gotta be smart about it. You know. That's so, what makes jiu-jitsu so great, I guess. That's right? what makes jiu-jitsu so great, yeah. Otherwise, if somebody just come up with a technique that was never seen before, you will finish everybody and, you know, and nobody will stand a chance. You were telling us just a couple quick stories while we were waiting here to, to get on the air, but, and uh, just a couple of those quick stories. How, how long have you been training jiu-jitsu these days now? Man, I, I, I used to like to think that, uh, that I started training jiu-jitsu since I was like six, seven, maybe eight. But I realized after I had my, you know, my son... I started training way before. <laughs> or six or eight. Huh? Gotcha. Yeah. You know, like, uh, you know, with him, you know, I was like, you know, since a little baby, getting his legs, you know, This moving, is the shrimp. <laughs> you know, working his grip. That's you know, hilarious. So yeah, so, so a while. It's been a while. Obviously, uh, I mean, you've got quite the family history there, and you said some of your your uncles were heroes. Not, not just Superman, not Batman, but you had, you know, family members, immediate family members that you could look up to, to, to train yes. with. I always like to say, because uh, I had so much contact with them, you know, I, was, uh, I lost my father when I was barely four. Uh, but my mother made sure to put me in contact with, with those guys. She said, you know, got to hang out with, with your uncles, you know, and they wanted to, you know, I, I say I lost a father, but I gained a few, mm. you know. So, and then I was like looking at them, you know, like four, five, six years old, looking at them, training, doing their stuff, telling stories. And all, and I was like just mesmerized, you know. That's I was amazing. just like looking, and man, I want to be like those guys. I yeah. Never wanted to be like an astronaut, uh, soccer player, <laughs> fireman. You know, I wanted to be them. Always wanted to be, be black, Batman, though. the Hulk. They didn't get, any, they don't have anything on those guys. <laughs> was there a was there a pressure? Did it ever affect you in maybe a, an intense way? Or was it always a very positive thing to be a member of no, the Gracie? I think Gracie it was family? always positive. Mm. Always positive. You know, my I think. I was like to, uh, to bring my mother too, but she did an amazing job, you know, raising myself and my and my brothers. She said, "One thing you guys gonna have to do, you gonna study, and you guys gonna become black belts." Awesome. I don't care what you do with your life. You guys gonna, be, <laughs> you guys gonna finish school, <laughs> and you guys gonna become black belts. That's awesome. Everything else, it's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And then you uh, you arrived in New York City in your your mid twenties, right? Yes. Did you immediately hook up with with your cousin Henzo, or was it did you find him there? 
you already planned to move to New York and found him. No, I moved. I moved there because of him. I actually, when I when I decided to to move to U.S., I went to uh, California first, to North California. I was there with Caesar, you know, uh, mm. uh, training with him. I spent spent a few months there. Uh, Nate Diaz at the time he was only like a blue or purple belt. Oh, that's crazy. You know, I remember him like we're traveling and doing for for some tournaments, ADCC trials, and and all that. And then uh, my brother Igor was in uh, in New York. And I think in j around January, he said, man, come here and you know, come spend a couple a couple weeks with us. So I went back and, uh, you know, training was so intense. Not that Caesar wasn't, wasn't good. Caesar, you know, of course, he's a very renowned jiu-jitsu school, had great talent got there. But my brother was there. My little brother, Greg, was there at the time. Hans was there. Hyan was there at the time. Daniel. So I had so many, so many family members yeah, there. It's quite the room, yeah. I've heard stories about that room. And, uh, yeah. And I was like, man, I can't go back. And I was like, how come, <laughs> you know, how, how come I'm going to tell Caesar that? You know, and I'm like, man. So I was like, and, and Hans was talking to me, saying, you got to stay here as well. You know, guys were going, you know, training for pride. And I decided to stay. That's amazing. Yeah. It, it, uh, New York is quite different than, than Brazil or, or California. Right? Did you take to it right away? Um, Man, it was, it was tough. Was New, it? New York was tough really? in the beginning. It was tough because uh, the cold, or everything, yeah, <laughs> everything. Yeah, you know the the drastic change. Uh, the cold was one of the things like I was shower. You know, like in Brazil, like you shower and you put sh clothes on, you get out the door. Mm -hmm. New York, I did the same in the middle of the winter. Like my hair was frozen. <laughs> <laughs> I was feeling like, what the heck? I would put Icy my hair in my. Right. I was like. I remember. I don't remember putting like hair gel, you know. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so it was, you know, the city. You know, That's the, why I came to Texas. Yep, <laughs> I know. And the city's such a fast pace. You know, I'll get out of the subway. I didn't know which direction to walk, and I'll try to get information for somebody. People just going by. I was like, man, I gotta find my way here, you know, quick. You know, but I love it now. I love it. Yeah, now you're a pro. I love huh? it. I love it. Yeah, New York's a special place, and then I think that it's so closely tied with with Kasai these days you know yes. you, you, when you think about uh, Kasai you definitely think about New York I oh. think the what you guys have, have built there is a is a really special really awesome event uh, if you guys have never been to a Kasai event you definitely have to check it out every time it keeps getting better and better in my opinion it's so much fun for sure it's, a, it's an awesome event like we've been getting like the, the amount of uh, uh, good feedback great feedback is so overwhelming mm -hmm. and then one thing that uh that like that I like about it, like that. I, not only my, uh, I brought my girlfriend there, right for the first one. To the she, event. To the first one, she doesn't train. You mm -hmm. know, she knows what I do. She, you know, of course, she supports me. But she told me like, wow, I didn't know jujitsu was that fun life. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. You that's know a, what that's I mean? the best compliment. Yeah. yeah you know, is, and I was like, wow, we're doing something right in here. You know. <laughs> and now she wants to go to every single one. Oh wow. Can I bring my friends? Can I do this? And uh, I know Rich. He brings, uh, you know. His daughters, yeah. uh, you know, people from his office, and they all love it. You know, I have my students who bring their girlfriends; they love it. That's been a major project for for almost all jujitsu uh, event promoters is, is to make it entertaining for non non jujitsu practitioners. Yeah, it's it's a very hard thing to do. Yes, you know that's why I want to try to get you know the no, the non uh, practitioners to go there and mm. to see. And I think we have we have something going on. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely do. I, I definitely, definitely do. We want you something. That's great. Uh, I, I mean, I guess we're already on to, to Kasai. Let's talk about it. The eight, the eight man is shaping up to be an incredible event. We have John Callistein, Gio Martinez, Gianni Grippo, Bruno Rosado, Tanquino, Ethan Krellestein. A lot of these guys are, are East Coast talents, like especially Callistein, uh, Grippo, and, and um, Paul Miao, I guess you could almost count. He's over there. He's in Unity. He's been there yeah. for a few years. Uh, are you using the Kasai platform to really boost like the, the local, really top level talent like that? Yes, I mean, it's almost like one hand washes the other, right? We have such a great pool of uh, of athletes in New York. They're like, and then it's one of the things that they reach and I said, why not do a show here, mm. right? We can have, you know, we don't need to go bring guys from too far to, to put on a, a great card. And uh, you can see on this card, people are calling like, oh, this is like a new uh, uh, ADCC bracket. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You know? I love I love that having Gio in there too. I think Gio is such a great addition. He's such an exciting guy, and, uh, and all, all those guys, Paolo and stuff. They've one hundred percent at ADCC a couple times. So. One hundred percent. You know, it's uh, when you see guys, you know, calling us and uh, let me be on the on the tournament. I want to be on the card, and it's 
Man, I, awesome. I can't tell you how exciting the last one was, especially, you know, obviously the first three were great, but, but the moving the venue to that Hammerstein Ballroom, yes. I, like every time um, I was it, at the event and every time I was just looking up around the mural on the ceiling, the place was packed. I was like, man, I can't believe this is a jiu-jitsu event. I can't, yep. I can't believe it. And yep. it just gets better and better. It looked time. amazing on the yeah. stream too. Hal and I were watching at, at home here in Austin, like, oh my God, it looks so fun. You know, it looks <laughs> so professional. It's a it's a beautiful sight. So and Hal had to buy a ticket this time. He, he uh, <laughs> yeah yeah he bought oh, a ticket nice. to New York. That's, that's this nice. is no- November tenth. Going to be live on Flow Grappling. If you guys want to watch it, it's going to be uh, an epic event. Kasai Pro Four. And I know one of the ones that I am most looking forward to. Got to talk about this one just real quick here. Is Gordon Ryan versus Mateus Denise, the champ, the middleweight champ, Mateus Denise. Of course, everybody knows about Gordon Ryan. We talk about him quite a bit on here. But uh, maybe we want to talk about how, how that match came together. Yeah, uh, you know, Mateus is a, is a powerhouse. Mm. You know, he's so strong and he mauled through the competition in, in, in his, yeah. uh, in his uh, on, the, on the middleweight championships, you know. And Gordon is Gordon, <laughs> you know. So it's like, uh, I want to call it like uh, the battle for, for New York the, to see who's the king of New York. <laughs> you know, I think it's going to be an amazing, amazing match. And I've been trying to see these guys go at it for, for quite a while now. Yeah. And, um, and now Matheus being the, the middleweight champion, you know, he's a strong, big guy, strong. He, he cut a lot of weight to, to, to be middleweight. So it's going to be very nice. I want to see how his power you know, goes against, you know, Gordon's a very strong guy. But, but yeah, some of those pictures that I've seen Matheus. Oh, he looks jacked. He's so big. Yeah. Matheus is huge, man. That Jack. guy's looking big. <laughs> What's uh, the rules format going to be? Is it 10 minutes submission only? Will there be an overtime? Yes, it's the uh, same format and that we did uh, for Yuri and, uh, and Gordon. Okay. And also 10 minutes sub only with uh, uh, my God, five minutes of overtime. Gotcha. Uh, with the side uh, points, mm-hmm. the side and, rules. And one of the things, man, like I said, I, I know I kind of harped on it, but, um, you know, going to Kasai 1, to Kasai Pro 2, it really was like a completely new show, completely different show. And then to Kasai Pro 4, it seems like every single time, or in, in 3, um, every single time you guys just go bigger and, and better than, than the previous one. How are you guys able to keep keep kind of pushing the envelope? What's the, what's the mentality that you guys have? Well, don't get complacent. Mm-hmm. You know, we just we just try to do things, you know, keep doing better and better. And then when I put, the, you know, the super fight between Gordon and Yuri on the first one, plus, like, the you know, I think people tend to forget, but the, the 155-pound uh, tournament was just stacked. It was an incredible card. It was yeah. stacked. Gary, Munch. Munch, Celsinho, Canudo, which it was like people didn't know about yeah. him as yeah, much, Rico but Coco. I knew the kid. Yeah, yeah. He Rico was before, Coco. He was, before he was the double champ. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I said, this kid's a beast. And I, and I told Rich, and like, he's a, he's a contender. Yeah. You know, he's a contender. So, like, can we keep, like, uh, and I was like, man, I'm going to have a hard time doing doing it for the second. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're gonna have a hard time. We're gonna so we, you know, we tighten up the corners every time in production. See what what didn't work. What can we do better? We always like we talk almost like on a daily basis. You know, always the teamwork. You know, like say dream, teamwork makes the dream work, right? Absolutely. And I keep getting contact with the fighters, and the, I think the better the the event gets, it gets easier to recruit some fighters too because they want to get involved. You know, they're gonna sure. capitalize on the popularity of the event. Mm-hmm. You know, guys are making a killing outside of the event, you know, with the selling the merchandise and, you know, sponsorships, seminars, you know, you see a guy like Craig Jones, like, it's like every day in a different city, you know, doing seminars, you know. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great stage. Um, I'd like to bring it back to the beginning a little bit maybe and talk about uh, the genesis of, of the rule set. It's got a really unique format of uh, being round robin, also allowing heel hook or uh, yeah, allowing heel hooks by having IBJJF points. Uh, how did you guys come to that? I'm sure there are a lot of other variations that you might have explored, but I think it's it's a great rule set that you managed. Rule sets to, in general, yeah. right? In these days yes. in jujitsu, you know, everybody's kind of trying different things a little bit. So yeah, it's a good question. How did you guys land on on that format? Yeah, it was it wasn't easy. You know, a lot of brainstorming mm-hmm. for sure. Uh, you know, just gonna go back a little bit. Um, the way when Rich and I we, we we came together, you know, we have a. I know Rich for a long time too, but uh, I was his business partner in the, in, the, in his gym, uh, Eric Owens. Um, I was working out with Eric, and I was talking about you know ideas for you know I've been thinking about doing a tournament, you know this and that. You know, I'm slowing down my competition days now. I was competing in the Masters, but I think I need to now. I have time to. To start working on a, on a tournament, and I wanted to do that. And he said, "Man, 
Rich wants to, he's just telling me that he wants to put a show. He's mm -hmm. very passionate about jiu-jitsu. So we set up a, you know, a dinner, a, a dinner meeting. We talked, you know, brainstorming. We started talking this dinner last four hours. And we came up with, uh, you know, with, with the base of the rules, you know. And we I bet you guys hit it off. Right? Like, like We that. hit it off, you know. Yeah. It was us because he's, he's definitely passionate about jiu-jitsu. I'm super passionate about jiu-jitsu. Yeah. You know, Rich, like uh, when, when you see Rich at the, at the event, you see like, you know, it's like a kid in a candy He's store, got a big you know? smile. That's awesome. His, yeah, his yeah. smile, his eyes like blooming. Yeah. And yeah. Um, it's so nice to see that, yeah. you know. It's so nice Pressure. to see that. And um uh, and we start talking about it, you know that, and of course, the, the most challenging thing is definitely the rules because how many events we have out there, you know, so many events, and people, Question. people like this, people don't like that, you know, some people like this one, some people like the other, and it's and it's hard to, like I said, to please Greeks and Trojans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right? a great bring phrase. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So it's hard to bring. So like, how are we gonna do it? And uh, and with like I, I hate to talk about myself, but I com I compete in, in virtually everything. Mm. Sure. I even did pro wrestling, man. You know yeah. what I mean? So like, uh, you know, so I was trying to aggregate a little bit of, you know, what the things I like, what works for the athletes, what doesn't work, you know, what works for the for the for the audience, and we came up to that with the, with those rules. It really is a winner. I, I personally am a giant fan of, of round robin because yes. a guy can can warm up. You know, maybe a favorite athlete that uh, has a bad performance early can come back, or you have a, a dark horse that beats everyone. Mm -hmm. There's there's so many variations in a storyline besides just a, a simple win loss that you yeah. see. Super yeah, fun. for sure. It's, it's a great live show too. It makes it really exciting. Like um, the way the tournament unfolds yeah. in front of you. It's a great live show. Yeah. People might or might not know, but like if you if you remember on the last tournament, uh, Jason Rao. Right, he was a little bit of a, yeah. a, a unknown guy there, mm. you know. If people who train with him, Craig talks about him all the time. Um, he f his first match was Canuto, and I think uh, Canuto beat him by a lot of points. Yeah, like ten zero or something. He was a like lot that. of points, you know. And but if you, I don't know if you remember, but in the last match, uh, if he had finished, uh, PJ, he would have made it to the final. He would have made it to the final. That's right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like in the end, he he, he tied up with the amount of points with uh, Canuto. Mm. You know, but uh, if you would have submitted the guy, it would have been enough. Would only what advance it because of head to head. Yeah, actually, right when that when that happened, like I remember, Kanato and a couple of his guys ran over and they were like, "What's the criteria? Who, who, who moves on? Who moves on? And I was like, "Man, I, honestly, I'm not too sure." Uh, but yeah, that was exciting. And, and yeah. Jason Rao actually is a guy who really, really impressed me. Uh, the yep. last one, he he looked like a star out there. Yeah, he, he, had, he had a tough first match, but from there on, he was he was cranking. He looked He's good. The perfect example. It takes a little, maybe it might take him a little bit to warm up. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, he, he being good. composed, you know, is a show of a true professional too. Not letting one loss get you down. Exactly. You know, if you're strong enough mentally to come back, that's a that's a huge sign. If right this was there. a one and done, we wouldn't have seen him again. Exactly. What you, you think about that backflip pass? Have you seen that before? You ever seen that backflip pa pass? Can yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> you do that? I you? Me? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I haven't it, seen that too it, much. It will be a disaster. <laughs> um, yeah, it was it was crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. You know, he's a you know. I wonder what he's gonna do next. <laughs> I, always, I know, right? You don't think he could could keep going, but he keeps pushing the envelope. Yeah, he's so fun to roll with. I had a chance to roll with Hanato in Guam, and it was in the gi, but he was still flipping all over, flying arm bars out of nowhere. He's just a, a cat out there. Yeah. yeah. Do you get to train with everybody when they when they come through? No, I didn't have a chance. I was so, busy, so busy, you know, yeah, yeah. doing all the stuff, you know, preparing. Rich, I think Rich got a chance to roll uh, with Hanato on the on the on the following okay, day. Okay, cool. Yeah. And how about Paul Harris? Did you ever get to, to train with him? No, I didn't. You no. know, uh, we we're, were from the times that we wouldn't cross train gotcha. in gym, different gym, gyms. Sure, sure, sure. Because <laughs> it, was, it wasn't uh, always so friendly, right? Back in the yeah, day. Yeah, no, it was, it was different times. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Do you think it's uh, an improvement now, the sort of familiarity and friendliness that a lot of competitors yeah, get to have? definitely. You know, mm -hmm. definitely. Like, I, I, I grew up in a, in, a in a tough environment, you know, like uh, the, the, the tensions, you know, was – well, high in the, you know, doing tournaments, you know. Sure. I, the rivalry was big. Yeah. It was big, you know. Entire like teams had rivalries, People would get yeah. kicked out of their gyms for, you know, going to roll with uh, somebody from the other team in somebody's house. It was, really? it was that bad, yep. Gotcha. It's definitely different, but there's still a lot of room, and uh, we're seeing more and more kind of trash talk move into the, the professional jiu-jitsu scene where people are trying to make a name for themselves, not necessarily just by performance, but by by being a, a big personality being on social media, mm -hmm. so you're you're in an interesting position here. You're you're an athlete, you're a coach, but you're also now an event promoter and, and owner. 
how do you see it? Do you see it as a as a as a good thing, as a necessary thing, maybe, um, good or bad? And it's not just jujitsu, right? It's kind of all combat sports these days are kind of moving, yeah. moving in we that direction. Yeah, we saw the most recent thing, Khabib and uh, of course, absolutely, McGregor, yes, know? yes. So it's like my take on that is there's a very fine line there, man. Mm. You know what I mean? When mm. you start like from promoting and disrespecting the the human being, you know, and you gotta be very careful because the moment that you start like uh. uh Crossing to the to the other side with like humiliating, disrespecting, disrespecting somebody on like on a, on a personal level, things can get ugly. Mm-hmm. That's too you much. You know, and and I won't take uh, you know I don't take for granted. Uh, I don't. Uh, I mean, of course, it's never a good thing to have people you know get to streams or fist fight outside of the. But I but I understand where the guy's coming from. You know, if somebody's being disrespectful on that level. It's like yeah. I'll, I'll probably hit somebody too. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, you know, for us too, we we have to um, think about it quite a bit because it's it's great promotion, it's great hype. But then I personally reflect on it sometimes. I'm like, what am I? What am I really promoting? Am I promoting yeah. a good thing? Am I promoting true jiu-jitsu? Or am I promoting just sort of maybe a very negative thing? So it it is interesting, and it's, it's definitely not going away. I feel like it's it's, yeah. it's pretty much an essential part of the fight game, mm-hmm. even in jiu-jitsu. So. Yeah. So, so is, is it something that, that you look for when you're when you're booking fighters for for Kasai? Is that is that come into play a lot? You know how they promote the fight, or, or is it really their, their jujitsu that, that um, tracks you? I'm, you know, it's, it, 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 Gordon says all the time, right? This uh, this is a this is a, a, a professional event. This is not like a, a, an IBJJF event that mm-hmm. a guy pays for, you know, for yeah. his for his entrance fee. He goes there, competes, win, lose, you know, doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, it's this is a professional event. You know, we're trying to bring jiu-jitsu to hopefully one day to like a UFC level, right? And it's important for, for fights to be promoted, right? Mm. Uh, we definitely look for fighters who are promoting the fight. It's important. We need. It's almost in a way they're like we need their help. You of course, know, we need a, you, you, We can like we need to be a team. You know, yeah. we have you guys yeah. supporting us. We support each other, and we need the uh, the fighters to embrace a uh, cause. You know, and they they're gonna embrace by promoting the fight, not necessarily disrespecting their opponent, but by promoting by you know using social media, talking about themselves, you know, saying how their match matchup style against the other of course. opponent. You know, it's it's important. It's, it's really important. If everybody wants to capitalize on this, and I think like you know, I see so many great talent out there, and you know, we want to make these guys make a living just off from competing in jiu-jitsu. Yeah, it's a good way to put it. It's a great way to put it. Just Everybody should be working together. Everybody to should be working together. Yes, mm-hmm. you know, it's not like uh, you know, oh, I want to just think about the Kasai part. You guys just gonna worry about the flow part, and you, the athletes just gonna worry about themselves. It's not gonna happen. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it's almost like gonna be pulling like strings different, you know, different directions. Sure, sure. You gotta paddle towards the same, you know, together in the same towards boat. The same goal. Mm-hmm. That's a great point. Yeah, it's. I don't know. I, I feel good about it. I feel good about where Jiu-Jitsu is going. I really like that there's a lot of great pro shows. I feel like there's a ton of opportunities now for athletes to make money. And um, you're saying that Kasai might even have some more shows coming up in the in the following year. Yeah, we we we're debating. You know, we're talking about the opportunity because I uh, we have uh, how can I say we have a, such a because due to our format, right? Mm-hmm. The tournament it takes a lot of space in our in our in our card in our time. Right, so we only have on a, on, a, on a main card. We can only have like fit like three su- uh, super fights. Mm-hmm. Originally, we had planned for two, mm-hmm. but then like you know we, we figured out a way to squeeze a third one in there, and we kept doing it. Um, yeah, but we're trying to you know the overwhelming amount of fighters that want to do super fights. You know, with us, it's a huge. So we you know we to try to figure out ways to put more shows and put more super fights and you know please the crowd. Awesome. And that it would be back in the uh, Hammerstein Ballroom for Kasai Pro 4? Hammerstein Ballroom. Nice. That place is awesome. Yeah, that was yeah. a lot of fun, definitely. Yeah, it's awesome. We have a lot of room to grow there, so we think it can be our venue for a long time. Mm-hmm. Right in Midtown Manhattan. Midtown right Manhattan, right down the street, you know. Times Square. Two blocks from Penn Station, and Penn Station, if you're not in New York, like all the major trains go there. You can get trains from uh, Connecticut, Jersey, Long Island, you know, all the subways go there as well. So, like, it's a it's a very you know a uh, strategic point and then uh, adcc trials um the first american trials first north american trials is the weekend before it's going to be in in jersey uh, yes tom, tom de blast a guy you know very well mm-hmm. is going to be um running those trials um one thing we've been talking a lot about is is kind of the evolution of the trials we were talking about the, mm-hmm. the submissions and things like that but do you, how, how do you think um these trials are going to compare maybe to, to some of the trials last year do you think we're going to be seeing more of that leg entanglement stuff or do you think 
guys would be probably yeah I yeah. think so. It's still very in. People are. are Denner's DVDs are out now. You know, so a lot of DVDs lot, out. A lot yes. of the, the secrets, I think, and uh, you know, a lot of people have been studying. The, those. Studying a lot. You know, people have been watching like it's very. You know, media so access. Uh, you know, yeah. You know, technique is so access these day, these days, and uh, it's, we're going to see that a lot for sure. I think we got a, a clip actually uh, of John's teaching uh, teaching methodologies ready. Maybe we yeah, can pull yeah, that up. A slightly different. Um, um, thing here. Just the other day, I went down to um, Albany, New York, for a, a, a seminar here. John Danaher and Ben Askren, two you know, um, very um, critical minds in the uh, in the world of grappling. And these guys you know, taught a um, joint seminar up in Albany. We got the whole interview. The whole interview is about an hour long, so they talked about quite a bit in here. You know, this is just a little a little clip. But yeah, we can play it here. This is just uh, John talking about um, training methodologies methodologies in jiu-jitsu. So let, let's cue that one up real quick. Your question was, is jiu-jitsu, as it's standardly practiced, doing a good job of this? And the answer is absolutely clear, no. Because ordinary jiu-jitsu is basically a club sport designed for recreational players. If it were done in the form of an NCAA wrestling program, then jiu-jitsu training would have to be absolutely revolutionized. It's my personal belief that Jiu-Jitsu sees enormous technical change year by year. Every year there's new techniques coming in, there's fascinating new stuff coming along all the time. But Jiu-Jitsu almost never sees innovation in training methodology. You see massive innovations in technique, zero innovations in training. And that's got to change. If Jiu-Jitsu is going to mature as a, as a sport, that has to change. So there you go. That's just a just a quick little one minute clip. Like I said, the uh, the interview is an hour long uh, about. So definitely go on the flow grappling and check out the the full conversation between the two of them because it's just an absolutely fascinating conversation. And obviously we pulled this clip here because it's kind of a, a controversial thing a, a little bit that that John is saying here. And, and obviously you have have um, experienced uh, like you were saying earlier a lot of trends in jiu jitsu. You, you've seen the evolution of jiu jitsu change quite a bit. Um, yes. So maybe we wanted to get get your thoughts on on some of that. No, for sure he has a point. Mm -hmm. um, Jiu-Jitsu is, is a very commercial thing these days. Um, you know, like I said, clubs, uh, people want to wanna have, like, we're trying to, I think the biggest, uh, in the, let me just yeah, take yeah. one step back here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Like, uh, training as a, as, a, as a kid in Brazil, mm -hmm. the only people who would train was people who were willing to compete. Mm. You know, there was no such thing like, you're just going to go there for Yeah, they have some, but, like, a big majority of people, Will be there, you know, competing. They will always be training for the next tournament. There will be nationals. There will be states. There will be, you know, even before worlds, you know, or when worlds was in Brazil, you know. So they're always looking. Are we going from tournament to tournament, right? Uh, and we're taking serious. Maybe right after a tournament, you know, take a little easy. Uh, and I, but I'm seeing the methodology change, right? Uh, then when jujitsu suddenly like a lot of a lot of people move to US. And we kind of like try to embrace that, uh, the same the, the same concept, but then like it's, it's only so much people that you're gonna attract if you keep like the the hardcore training, mm -hmm. right? Not everybody just wanna it's it's like wrestling, you know? Who trains wrestling for for fun? That's oh true. yeah, I'm just gonna go you know to <laughs> to wrestling practice tonight. No, yeah, yeah no one does. <laughs> you know, I mean, those are amazing amazing sports, you know? I, 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 I did both, but it's hard to like once you get keep getting slammed, you know and Doing like you know, the head pushed down and being slammed on the ground. You know, jujitsu gives you the ability to lay down on your back. Mm -hmm. You know, hang out, play. You know, I always like to say try that. Try some uh, things. Have try fun. Try some things. You know, yeah. I like to say that uh, the Brazilians are such a lazy people that we invented martial arts they can do laying down. <laughs> 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 you know, but uh, yeah. So, but we decided to you know to say, wow, how can we gonna bring more. People to jiu-jitsu, so we, we decided to step step down a notch, you know, develop new systems for you know, attract you know uh, the average person, mm -hmm. right? So uh, the system that we've been doing at Hanzo's for a long time is uh, we kind of like put the white belts a little bit in a bubble, right? We have a special separate program, you know, instead of like back in the days. Okay, man, get in there. This is a this is a guard. This is an arm bar. <laughs> this is a sweep. Get in survive. there. You know, just go out survive. There and survive. This is how you tap. <laughs> maybe, You're gonna do a maybe lot of that. Guy, and more senior guy, hey guy, you know, help him off a little bit. You know, the first two classes and that's it. Then now the guy was on his own, you know, figure it out. You know, what's that teaching moves? But now it's different, 
right? That's why we, we you know, at Hensel's uh, Academy, we have like, you know, 1,200 students, 1,300 students, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, but if you see uh, during the comp training, if you see during uh, academies, they're like 100% geared towards uh, 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 for metal chasers, let's put it this way. Mm. Uh, they, you know, we've seen, we've seen, I've seen that a big change already on the yeah. on the on the methodology of training, you know. And with when he, when he said that uh, technique keeps evolving, um, you know, amazingly uh, year by year, I definitely agree with that. You yeah. know, it's crazy. I'm not the, I'm not the guy who, the the old school guy who's gonna say, yeah, but be my time was different. You know <laughs> what I mean? No, you know, these guys are phenomenal athletes. You know, I remember. You know, on a, on a blue belt, when I was competing as a blue belt, I was doing like four or five matches, you know, and with a little rest. Some, now I, I see a blue, ba a blue belt, he was doing like six, seven, mm -hmm. eight sometimes, depending yeah. how they fall Huge in the bracket. brackets, yeah. Huge brackets, you know, a black belt is doing like, you know, five, six matches. Even at Masters Worlds, we, we were Gigantic brackets. Guys with yeah. 65 guys in, in those, you know, Master yeah. Two black belt divisions, you know, there's th those um, divisions are, are stacked these yeah. days. So that's how, to me, that's the, the, the reflection of uh, of the how things change, how mm -hmm. things got got picked up. What do you think the catalyst is for for how, how things change? Is it just that that it's become more popular, that more people are doing it, or do, do you do you think that this, you know, age of technology, age of of you know, accessible video, kind of everywhere, has really played a big big role? I think it's everything. You know, definitely like uh, you know, technology has a lot to do with it. You know, it's now things like uh, are, are so e people, man, you can reach everybody across the world. You know, through through your phone. Mm -hmm. You know, it's crazy, you know, but when internet share first techniques. Came, share techniques, you can share techniques live, mm -hmm. you know, you you can review your matches immediately, you matches send the people, immediately. you know, you can, you know, maybe, uh, you know, if you, if you, if you, if one of my students might be competing the other side of the world, he can FaceTime me and then, you know, I can give him a little pep <laughs> talk, you know, right before, you know, uh, yeah, it's, so it's everything. Technology has a lot to do with it because, you know, technique is more accessible. And uh, but definitely like you know, and that helped like grow the sport, right? People people get to know more, you know, more about it, and uh, attract more people. You're gonna attract more guys that are not gonna compete, but you're also gonna attract guys that are willing to compete and make a living off of it. You know, so it's like yeah, everything going together. I think um, maybe the, the easiest counter argument to, to Donahue's position might be that it's not like he's the only coach with a full time stable of athletes we have other teams like atos tli checkmat they've all got guys that are in there six hours a day as well that are mm -hmm. that are training like like beasts and i think there's definitely a huge segment of the jiu-jitsu population that's just a, a recreational player yes um but I, I think that he might be ignoring the the competition teams mm -hmm. because they do exist and and they're they're in there just as much training um yeah just as hard perhaps yeah i don't want to Put words in, in John's mouth. He th he was asked a question specifically about about the um, you know comparing it to an S uh, to college wrestling. That's yeah, true. That's true. Oh, yeah. Wrestling program. Yeah, de definitely. So, um, and it, you make a good point though about you know it's the jiu jitsu is doing something right. Right. It's you don't you don't something. see too too many new wrestling schools all over the world or new these new judo academies popping yeah. up all over the world. You know. So I think jiu jitsu is certainly doing something right. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you'll, you'll see wrestling clubs, but the wrestling clubs that we see out there. Is to help uh, kids in the off season. Yep. In the ref in the wrestling off yes. season. Yes. Right. Actually, that's we had a, a member of the Flow Wrestling team say to us, maybe we're doing something wrong because we can't wrestle anymore. <laughs> you know, there's no outlet for them. There's no club. There's nothing for them as adults to to do for fun. It, it's over. Once they're out of college, yeah. that's it. So. Yeah, because such a yeah, but I think you, I think like we both we can both like learn from each other. Not not True. only not only. Uh, uh, Technique-wise, you know, training-wise, but you know, the methodology for sure. Mm. You know, if you wanna, you know, push your athletes to the to the to the to the higher to the higher level, or to you know, or st or stretch the the rope, you can definitely, you should definitely like look into like some some of those trainings, yeah, because these guys are, you know, they compete, they train to go to the Olympics. Exactly. And the Olympics is the ultimate, you know, mm -hmm. competition. That's great. What do you um, think about jiu-jitsu in the Olympics? I guess that's the 
natural progression. You, you like the idea of jiu-jitsu in the Olympics? Or, cause uh, I know there's people, some people who don't like that idea. Some people like, some people don't like. Yeah. Uh, but the moment that you're going to start seeing jiu-jitsu in the Olympics, that it's going to happen what John was, was saying. You know, people are going to have to adapt to the mm. to more of the, uh, 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 the, NC, the NCAA uh, uh, style of methodology, you know. Coaches are going to, you know, push you through your limits. I cannot push a, you know, like a, a guy who just, you know, just finish like I ate right our shit, you know, <laughs> get in there to just, you know, learn a self-defense and learn to get a sweat, you know, to like, you know, I cannot do that. To him. Yeah, yeah. No, I that's train like that. I train hard, yeah. you know, I train, but no. But there's also a, a segment of, of jiu-jitsu that just do it to, like you said, for self-defense and, and for fun. And, yep. and that's a big part of it, so. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I don't know what, what else we got on the docket here. I mean, we, I'm hyped about Kasai. Yeah, we got, talked about John. Talked a lot about Kasai, I guess. I'm, I mean, also, how about that Mateus Lutz though? Huh? He came out of nowhere on my radar. Uh, you know, and yep. he, he did had a good performance at Pans this year, and I, I watched him at Worlds again. But man, he really impressed me at um, at Kasai Pro Three. Yep. He, he looked incredible out there. Yeah. Had a great match with, with Wagner. Had a couple other great matches, and he's coming back. He's coming back as yeah. well, right? Putting him again. Um, yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's like, he's like, he's uh, uh, I'm not going to say a mini, a mini Mateo Zinis, but like a slightly smaller, <laughs> slightly, just a bit, <laughs> just a yeah. bit, you know, he's a, but, uh, he's a, he's a, he's a great kid. Yeah. You know, I, I like him a lot. You know, he's, uh, he told me like when, uh, when he came in to weigh in for the, for the trials, he said, I'm winning the trials first and then I'm going to win the, wow, that's the, awesome. Uh, and then he did. And he, he, he won the trials anyway. He won the trials, and then uh, he, placed he, he placed it. Yeah. You know, he was the he actually was our first uh, guy who won the trials to to place it. Oh really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. His match with Wagner really impressed me because Wagner is an intimidating fighter. He's yes. a scary. He's got a reputation, yep. and also he lets you know immediately that he's playing for keeps. And uh, Mateus kept his cool, or at least he he didn't get. Um, too emotional during the during yeah. the battle. I, would I say. thought I thought uh, Wagner played smart against him because uh, Wagner didn't need to beat him because of the format. Mm -hmm. That's right. Right. So he I think I, yeah, I, th I think I think Wagner took him out of contention, you know, just by you know with the draw. And uh, but Mateus, man, I'm I'm excited to see him again. You know, he he lo he loves Kasai too. He, he's like, man, please put me on the card. I don't care against who. Just me in there, I said it's on. That must be a, a great thing to hear to have someone be passionate about the yeah. project that you're involved and like, with. And like his this this speech that he gave after his match, you know, he said that uh, about you know the dream, you know, I was just you know somebody who went in for the trial, uh, won the trial, and now I'm here holding the third place trophy. Uh, so if you believe in yourself, just sign up for the next trial, win it, and then uh, train hard, win it, and you're gonna be on the big stage. That's awesome. Uh, let's bring it back to Wagner real quick. It just reminded me when I was talking about him. Um, there's been a little bit of controversy about the, the toughness of his technique and that he might be too mean, that, you know, he does that, that muffler technique <laughs> that's, that's been very popular lately. What do you think about that? that yeah, technique? what do you think about that? You know, um, I wonder how does he practice that? <laughs> <laughs> does he do that to his friends? Yeah, his training uh, partners. Uh, no friend. Wagner has no friends. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, he's a cool guy. Yeah, you know, yeah, he's yeah. A, I met him a few times before. Uh, man, he's he's doing what he has to do. Mm. You know, I think that's very valid. Um, we, I, see, I, I seen the, those similar things and actually that too been done before like in the gym, like when like, when kind of like people like uh, kind of like Pulling the other one a little bit, mm. harassing uh, him a little bit. <laughs> you know, um, I can remember, like, you know, time and time again. I was younger, you know. Some senior guy will mount me. You know, I was tired. He opened the gears and oh, you know, that's like, you know, <laughs> get, leave me nowhere. And some of the guys will even blow like hot air inside. You know I mean? So you're so, used yeah. to it. Uh, like that's nothing. Yeah, that's nothing. <laughs> and one thing that my uncle Hillion was always told me, like, man, get get comfortable with the uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's his weakness. But I, I like, yeah, I yeah. like what he's doing. You you were, you were mentioning there some of the. Um, Earlier there, you, you know, you guys had such a, a room of killers out yep. there early in New York. What, what were some of those those training sessions like? I, they must have kind of been pretty formative for you, right? I mean, you yeah. mentioned, you know. No, uh, it was, it was, man, when I remember like uh, training for the ADCC of 2007, man, the same room we have uh, myself, Roger, 
Romulo Borral, uh, Braulio, Jamal Patterson, uh, who else? Hanzo, Daniel, yeah. Hanzo in there. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it was such a, man. It was, brutal room? It was brutal room. <laughs> brutal room. I remember, like, finished training, just, like, almost drop, dropping dead, so. Was it just rounds? Or did you guys drill? Or was we just did everything. everything. You know, that's why I think, like, we had, like, good methodology. Some days, like, because uh, I remember Romeo, uh, Roger, Brawley, all, we all came to train, to New York to train together. Uh, but we did everything together. We go to, uh, to Martin Rooney to do, like, a strength and conditioning uh, training. Uh, so some days we would, we would, we would train wrestling together. So one day, we, if we had, like, a really tough morning, in the afternoon, we'll come back and we we'll just do like uh, situational drills, you know, starting the starting the back, starting the mount, starting the side mount, and we we just keep going on and on. So we we did a little bit of everything. Other nights we just do like wrestling, you know. Some days we we'll do like we we'll go at it, you know, on ADCC rules. So we had a very uh, uh, smart training. How long uh, was the camp? Was it eight weeks, twelve weeks? I won't remember somewhere like that, you know. Yeah. I think some of the guys who weren't living in uh, in uh, in town, they were there maybe there just like for maybe a little short in that. But I mean, yeah, I think uh, Braulio and Homie and me were probably there for like five six weeks. That's awesome. But yeah, but we kept training. Do you think we could ever see you back on on a maybe a Kasai card or maybe a, a ACC super, super fight, fight yeah, or yeah. something yeah. like that? Yeah. What do you think? I don't know, man. It's like uh, every time I'm I'm there, you know, running everywhere, <laughs> looking, you know, it's even giving me a little goosebumps, you know. Yeah, I want to be there, you know. <laughs> I want to be there, but I just want to make sure uh, when I feel that the the company's already, you know, good to go, the good right to go, path. you know, on the right path, you know, everything is like flowing. Uh, maybe we can jump in there. Maybe we can jump maybe in there. Maybe we can jump in there. <laughs> that's awesome. Exciting. All right. Yeah. Well, I think that's uh, any other any other things in in yeah. jiu that we want. To- Touch on or, or talk about here? Any, anything come come to mind for you, Hollis? That you want? Um, no, not really. Unless you trends have... or anything <laughs> going on these days in jiu-jitsu that we didn't get to. I feel like we could have, we could have a whole separate podcast of Avengers with Henzo. That's a whole another a whole know, another yeah. series. Maybe you gotta bring him in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can tell him the story better than himself. Yeah, yeah. That's something else. <laughs> well, it was a lot of fun having you on, on the Fistful yeah. of Callers. Thanks for coming out. And uh, so again, if you're in the Austin area, look up those seminars, and we'll see you on the next episode. It was awesome, guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching.